you can live by. And so, become yourself. Because the past is just... Well, I, uh, I never thought that Katie would go to those extremes. Uh, in a word, she, she was uh, spirited, impatient. Katie was always strong-minded. Uh, you couldn't say no to her. She'd take it as a challenge. And if she didn't agree with you, she wasn't one to give in. That's the kind of American stock she comes from. Uh, if she hadn't left home, maybe none of this would have happened. But then, nobody stays home. She was quite good when she was young, always giving things away. She was pretty, she was tiny hands, soft skin. She really wasn't like any of those other young people. Selfish, foul-mouthed young men. They, they changed her. She was very beautiful. Uh, she was a model revolutionary soldier. And by that I mean that when it really got heavy, the radicals started to fade. But not Kate. She was total commitment. It's just that she got caught up in that revolutionary excitement. Uh, she couldn't have turned back even if she wanted to. Because, well, that would have meant failure. She never allowed herself to lose at anything. I think I should go and study you. Why? Because you're a man? Teach your children well. The father's help will slowly go by. And feed them on your dreams. The one they fix. The one you know by. Yes, for 9 o'clock. Okay. All right? Yeah. You get to the courthouse on time and nobody gets hurt, okay? Okay. Be careful, huh? Relax. Good luck. Exactly one hour to nine. the worst it can be. And I'm committed to making America a better place, no matter what the cost. For in your time, we have the opportunity to move not only towards the rich society and the powerful society, but upwards to the great society. The great society rests on abundance and liberty for all. It demands and ends poverty. Well, we were, uh, we were supposed to be the cream the educated, future wives and mothers of America. But we really had no idea what we wanted to do. And Kathy was like all of us, sort of uh, passing through. In the college, she was pretty competitive and all that, but she wasn't an educator or anything. She was bright. Um, she had a good sense of humor. Yes. You want me to ask him to bring a friend for you? 
I just want to play! Oh, wow. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> Saturday I'm supposed to teach. <laughs> oh, we cancel it! She's a dedicated Margot, a dedicated educator. She's just saving her body for future generations, right? <laughs> Sewing it up for posterity, huh? <laughs> Sacrificing herself to bring enlightenment to those that want that. And it just so happens to me that I would prefer to spend this Saturday teaching kids to read mm. than wrestling with one of Mark's jerky friends, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're getting married. Oh, that's from the neck. Well, it's not his fault there's a draft. No. It just sounds like you're getting drafted instead of him. At least I'll know what I'll be doing next year. Which is more than some people on this bed can say. True. Well. Well, congratulations! Oh, oh, it's delicious. Oh, Catherine, I forgot. You received an award from college today. They said it's for health. Award? I didn't get any award. Well, I guess they just forgot to tell you. Thornton, where's the award? Award? Oh, comics. Had it on me. I've got it. For conduct above and beyond the duties of a daughter, we present you with this annual Orman Attagirl Award. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, and by the way, dear, Louise wrote and said that you could use her apartment while you're in graduate school. Well, she didn't exactly say that. But she implied it. I don't think I'll be needing it anyway. Well, where will you stay then? I'm not going to go next year. You're not going to graduate school, Katie? I wrote you. I want to work in South America. Ridiculous. What difference can a young girl from college make in a jungle? It's not really a jungle. Katie, what's the point of it? I want to do something to help people. Noble motive. Why can't you do it here? They need me there. They've never heard of you there. Well, I want to go. Well, we're not going to let you. You can't stop me. Thornton, I will run my own life, Mother. But hold on here. Just hold on. You want to go down there, and we want you to stay. 
Now, let's see if we can work out some kind of compromise. Now, let's say I were to pay for two fully qualified teachers to go. What would you say to that? I'd say that's a very generous gesture. Them, instead of you. But I want to see what I can do. Well, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you. It's obviously not what we want for you, Katie. Obviously. But I'm going. Well, you're old enough to run your own life. That's what you really decided you want to do. That's what you'll do. Look, it's not the end of the world. I go and teach for a couple of years, and most likely I'll come back and meet the man of my dreams, get married, and have a family. And we'll all live happily ever after. Especially Mom. I grew up a princess in a fairy tale. No suffering, no hardships, no misfortunes. It's a good life. Everybody should be so lucky. But they aren't. Just look at those kids I taught. I mean, 14-year-old American kids who can't read. I was amazed and angry. I lived in a protected shell so long. You see, that now that I know, I felt I had to do something about it. Sometimes I wish I'd been a troublemaker when I was young. That wouldn't be such a surprise to everybody now. But I was always so damn good. <laughs> Someday be free. I have today ordered to Vietnam the Air Mobile Division. Catherine, she was so eager to find some way to be of service to our world here. I was worried. She was over anxious. She could not get used to our slower pace. She was supposed to teach hygiene and nutrition. But that was not enough for her. She began to teach the children how to read. Quién sabe? Pepe. Bueno, Lopa. Catherine, I want to talk to you. I know. You finally decided to give up the church and marry me. Catherine, the women are saying you're telling their husbands not to pay the rent. Filthy rooms. Is that true then? Well, I didn't say that. But what are you telling them? I'm teaching them to read. The men don't need to read. Besides, I don't think you should be with them alone. Do you want to go with me? Don't worry. I'm pretty strong, see? My... Fuerte, Tilo! Fuerte! Anyway, Father God's on my side. <laughs> Julio. El campesino. Tra baja, la baja, la ye, tierra. Muy bien. Si yo me lo sé, ¿qué están haciendo ellos? Al trabajo. ¡Al trabajo! Si yo me lo sé. ¡Al trabajo! Tienen que hacer el trabajo allá, todo esa manzana de allá. Hello from the newlyweds. Mark and I are honeymooning, and I mean moaning on the romantic Riviera. Mark finishes law school in January. So if you need any legal advice to your peasant friends, wait until then and we'll fly to your rescue. Get this. Sharon is modeling in New York for Vogue. Far cry from the philosophy study, huh? Listen, kiddo. Why don't you please come home and get married so we can go to lunch together? Don't eat the food down there or you'll get fat and I'll have to hire you as my maid. I really do miss you and think of you so often. I love you. 
See you, kiddo. Your friend, Margo. Senor Vega de Landlord says we cannot learn from you anymore. Why? He says he will double our rent. Julio, he has no right to do that. He has the land. He's rich. He's powerful. You must resist him. You can refuse to work. You can strike. No, we can't do nothing. Why? Are you afraid? We are not afraid. We are poor. I'm sorry. Adios. has driven him away, his whole family. Why don't you do something? Whose side are you on? I'm on the side of God. And whose side's he on? Senor Vega? Senorita, all U.S. products. Espera, mire. Good price. It's all the best quality. Where did you get those things? Those aren't supposed to be sold. They're gifts of the American people. Yes, yes, yes. Es un bandido from the man, un comunista.
Viene a ayudarnos. Hi. Hi. Uh, Julio says you can help us. We need money to buy guns and ammunition. I'll help you get food and medicine, but not guns. Why not? I have nothing to do with bloodshed. Do you think anything will change without blood? They're killing us. Are we not to kill them in return? You can change things without bloodshed. How? You can teach the Indians to read and write. And they can deal with the government. The government in this country belongs to the rich. They have the power and the guns. They will give us nothing, no matter how well we read or write. Well, at least we can improve the way of life. Help avoid malnutrition and unsanitary living conditions. That's nothing. You only delay the revolution by such a things. You dilute the anger of the people and keep them from rising up to kill their oppressors. It is hungry people who make revolution. Poor people. Do you really think the people want a revolution? If you were truly one of the people, if you were poor, you would not ask such a question. Juan. Okay. Carti is nuestra amiga. Más bien ayudar. Está bien, entiendo. But we do thank you for your help. Adios. Vamos, apúrense. Hay que para la montaña. I regret that we have not spoken before, but I've been hearing a lot of good things you're doing here. Is that why you had Julio beaten and driven away? King Azul. Muchacho de ayer? Si. Ah, that fellow? My overseer says he refused to work. It is not fair to the others if one would not work. He was beaten and driven away at your orders because he dared to stand up to you. Senorita Olman, I am unhappy that you have chosen me to be your enemy. I hope we might work together to help these people. How can you say that when you won't pay them enough to live on? You won't lower their rents? You won't give them an education so they can help themselves? Why is it you're so afraid of what I teach them? Oh, my dear young girl, I'm not afraid. How can one so young be so self-assured? If you're not afraid, then why are you trying to stop the men from my classes? Senorita Olman, how long have you been here? A year. You live by moments, days, a year. But we live by centuries. These people do as their fathers and grandfathers did, just as I do as my ancestors did. You will go away. They will forget. But nothing will change. You're wrong. Things are changing now. Like what? Like the bandits up in the hills? That's a problem we have had many times before. It is a problem we know how to deal with. You can't shoot all of them, Senor Vega. I shoot no one. What right do you have to come and interfere? How do you justify your arrogance? That you're American? You think of us as backward savages to whom you bring enlightenment. Tell me, in your own country, are there not enough problems to divert you? We don't beat people and drive them off their land, and we don't shoot everybody who disagrees with us. You're a very young person, Miss Olmert. I wish you a long and happy life.
Catherine, where will you live? In a hut, like the rest of you prisoners. If I'm going to understand them, I've got to live like I must them. warn you. There'll be trouble if you persist in your actions. Great trouble. That's the idea, Father. Well, at, at first we got a letter from her every week. I knew she was lonely and missed home, and so I, I sent her something. And, and then her letters started changing. She got very serious. Better. Uh, she asked for money. A good deal of it, in fact. She said it was uh, to help the people down there. And she asked for books. Political books. Regis de Bray and Marx. She was writing letters to Congress and the State Department about the misuse of American aid. And we began to really worry. Mitchell, I'm from the embassy. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. In light of several complaints that we've received what about complaint? your work here, I'm afraid that the ambassador has no other choice but to ask you to leave the country. What complaints? Now, everything is right here in these documents. One thing, you've been interfering in local business affairs. Business affairs? Also, there's some question about your teaching. You seem to have been receiving some very questionable literature in the mail. How do you know? Have you been opening it? Look, isn't it true that you've been buying contraband goods on the black market and some of these goods have turned up in the hands of bandits? You seem to have forgotten that you are here as a guest of this country's government. A corrupt government. A friendly government. Oh, a friendly government. Doesn't matter whether they're corrupt or honest, just as long as they're friendly, right? Look, I'm sorry. I, I really am. Oh, yeah, I bet you are. Got a plane ticket home for you at least today. I'll help you get your things together. I have no things. Just some people to say goodbye to. I failed to do anything down there, really. I felt empty, weak, powerless, ridiculous. I think it's senseless to Help the victims of a cruel system if you let the system remain cruel. But I just didn't believe then that one had to kill the better one's life. I thought both Vega the landlord and Juan the revolutionary were wrong. There had to be another alternative. <laughs> to recommend that you bring the most urgent decencies of life to all of your fellow Americans. There are men who cry out that we must sacrifice. Are they going to sacrifice? Oh, when she came back from South America, she was really different, kind of out of, you know, distracted. She talked about going to grad school, which made Mom and Dad pretty happy, but I, I could see she was really miserable. I mean, hardly anyone could talk to her. You look awfully good on that stud, dear. Such language. Well, she did. Nothing, lemonade? No, thanks. Katie, you remember the old McIntyre place? You used to ride down to Max Pond? Yeah. Your father's thinking of buying it. 
What happened to Matt? Well, after his wife died, he started drinking and let the ranch go to pot. It's up for auction, and I'm tempted to grab it. Be an awfully nice place for someone to raise grandchildren. Mom, your hints are about as subtle as a battleship. What about the McIntyre? Where will they go? Well, back east, I suppose. Mac's got a son back there. Oh, great. Do we need Max Ranch? No, we don't need it. But I've always had a liking for that place. Besides, it's good rental property. Well, if we don't need it, why don't you let Mr. McIntyre keep it? Katie, you, you don't seem to understand. He has to sell. It's a sheriff's auction. Then why don't you buy it and give it back to him? I'm sorry I brought it up. I thought you'd be pleased. Did you think I'd be pleased to see somebody lose his ranch? My own father grabbing it just because he has the money. Katie, that money is responsible for your comfort and well-being. I don't want my comfort and well-being to depend on somebody else's hardship. You know, when I first came back here, I thought there was a big contrast between down there and here. There's no contrast at all. Just done more. Business like here, more American. Oh, Kate wasn't really sure what she wanted to do. Uh, grad school didn't make sense to her. She was getting nuts living at home. We met for the first time when she answered an ad uh, to join a group of us that had formed a free school down south. We were providing an alternative for the outmoded racist school system. And, you know, that was the first time I met her. She walked through that door and immediately got shot. Everybody gets three shots, right? Right. How many is that? One, two, three. Right. When you shot, you fall down, and you have to count two. You smoked the cows! I just did. I need to go one, two, three, don't you know nothing? Oh, Robert, Robert. You gotta lighten up on the lady, man. She was counting in Espanol. Billion. She was counting in Spanish. Now, do you remember when we were talking about other languages, French and Spanish and German? Well, this was Spanish. She was talking another language, a different language. Yeah, and you're the one that don't know nothing, Robert. Okay, now, Robert, if you give her a little slack, maybe we can convince her to stick around and teach us all how to count in Spanish. What do you think about that? Hi, Mike. Welcome to chaos. I'm Lillian Coleman. Hi. Bob Klein. Hi. I think you made a hit. Okay, now, listen up. This is Kate. I don't know much about her except that she can count to ten in Spanish. Huh? Should we let her stay? Yeah! I think you can stay. And I think you all made a wonderful decision. Bye. 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 Thank you, Savannah. I think I will. I'm not so sure about my eardrums. You know how long it took us to get a peep out of those kids? First couple of weeks, they just sat there acting like they thought they were supposed to in a school. You did good. I think you did. Thank you. <laughs> that took a while, but we finally got through to them that our school was different. And they weren't going to get their heads batted in for acting like kids. Yeah, the only problem we have now is that the local school board tends to identify noisy kids with a commie plus. Very logical. After you, ladies. <gasps> I'm glad you're here, Kate. So am I. By the way, Watch out for that one. He's known to be a pretty fast worker. <laughs> Thank you very much Bye. for the recommendation.
You got a place to stay? Yeah, boarding house. Till I can get an apartment. Funny room at my place. You are a fast worker, aren't you? No. I just figure people see their lives about this long, when in reality their lives are about that long. So I think we get right down to it. So, do you have A, a boyfriend, B, a husband, C, one or more possessive lovers? Just check one of the above. None of the above. Oh, great. Damn it. Wait. You wear contacts? Yeah. Why? I don't like the way I look in glasses. Now, let me ask you a question. Um, is it, wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't the point to see as clearly as possible? Yeah. Do you have glasses? Yeah. Put them on. Thank you. Just put it in there. See what I mean? I think you look ravishing. Ravishing? I'm oh, speaking of a long life, ravishing. Thank you, man. Get out of town, you nigger lover! Hey, thank you. That was the mayor. Probably heard you were in town and came to say howdy. And I thought South America was a foreign country. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that's because you, you're new to these parts. See, but pretty soon you'll catch on. See, as a foreigner in these parts, you might find it strange for some folks to call other folks nigger lover. But that's because you don't understand the nuances, ma'am. Now, do you know what I mean by nuances? No. See, down here they figure that if a black man rubs off against a white man, that white man turns black. Now, now, some of them just say half and half. Now, who wants to walk around living black and white? Who wants to be a newspaper? If you get my meaning. <laughs> <laughs> Keep this on your face, Kate. What do you think a kid's gonna do with you slap him in the face, huh? Not hit your back, not hit a lady? Let me just tell you something, Kate. This is not gone with the wind. I, mean, I want to tell you something that you're lucky that you weren't killed. I mean, damn lucky. At least raped. Shut up! No, I, I will not shut up. This is serious, Kate. Now, listen. You gotta face the facts. Some of these people hate you. I know it was stupid. I just didn't think. God, I didn't want those kids to see that. See it. They know more than you and I put together, Kate. They have grown up in it. I just wish the hell I had been there with you, that's all. what would you have done? What would you have done? I would have looked that cracker right in the eye. And I would have said, so long, buddy. And I would have been stoned on the wind. You would have seen one white shaggy blur going right through the door. Faith, do your stuff. And I wouldn't have stopped until I was in Canada, Kate. I was in Canada. They don't call me non-violent client for nothing, you know. Huh? Oh, fuck. What? What? God really tested me. I know he did. Is that better? It's gotta be better. Yeah. You my sweetie pie? Yeah. Hey! Get in there! Oh! Oh! Hey! Oh! Give me that. What's happening? This is 
Pleasant Hill. Karen Churchmore. Our landlord. And these gentlemen are from the fire department. I'm sorry to say that we've discovered about two dozen violations of our fire code. Basement is the main problem down here. Upstairs ain't much the matter. Now, I figured if we could block off this area, that way we might not have to this condemn the whole building. ridiculous. We're only doing our job, miss. You're doing a job, all right. We are trying to protect these children. You're not trying to protect these children. You don't give a damn about these children. You just want us out. You oughtn't to talk that way, miss. Won't do a bit of good. You've got two weeks to make up your mind, Reverend. And if we don't, you're going to throw us out? Just going to pick up the kids from on the street, too? Mr. Klein, please. Why don't you just throw us out right now, huh? Okay, okay, you still want to bring a kid out! Please, get out! Gentlemen, I'm, gentlemen, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll see you up. Anything you say, Master! Anything you say! Three decades was Uncle Thomas got his son. You shut up! If you know nothing about it, you just shut up. Sorry? It's just that we haven't lost the school, we lost a room. We'll find another room, Lillian. We'll, we'll meet on the street if we have to. They're not about to shut us down. The school is shut down! Listen, it's present for them. It's just being things out now. What do you mean? I'm gonna lay it on you straight. We don't want no white faces teaching black kids. You understand? No, I don't understand. Let me ask you a question. What difference does it make what color we are? It makes all the difference. We don't want no kids growing up saying, uh, whitey ain't so bad because I dug my white teacher. Kids got to learn to think black, act black, and you the wrong color in the wrong place. See, white people got to straighten their own stuff out before they go around helping anybody else. You understand? You got to liberate your own self. And the first step is for you to realize that you are the enemy. You were born the enemy, and you grew up learning how to be the enemy. You're responsible. You got to face that about yourself. Now, wait a minute, man. What do we have to do to prove that we are not the enemy? You got to die. Or figure out some way to get born all over again. Do you believe all that? Not everything. You're going to teach the kids to hate? We're going to teach them how to love themselves. Look, you're both my friends. But right now, hate is the strongest weapon we've got. Besides, you can't love a system you're trying to destroy. If you do, then you really are the My white skin has given me a lot of privileges in this society. And that fact has been hard for me to come to grips with. I didn't want to admit it, but when those black power advocates rejected us, they had good reason. Because I could always go back home and live off the profits of an unjust system. And for them, there was no going back. There was nothing go worth going back to.
I left the South together and we became organizers for the SDS, Students for a Democratic Society. We were like uh, traveling salesmen for the, uh, the movement. We went from campus to campus trying to consolidate anti-war sympathizers into a political group. Then we got into draft resistance. And the added motivation there was that the kids suddenly became 1A. Okay. I want him to see you too, okay? Really? Yeah. I want him to see both of them. Okay. I'm pregnant. Okay. Did you hear what I just said? Oh, sorry. Yeah. You just said you were pregnant. Well, you don't have to worry. I won't make you marry me. I'm not worried about that. What do you want to do about it? I think I want to have it. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can't you imagine a little curly hair Ho Chi Klein running around? Do I want it? Me? Yeah! <laughs> Do I want it? <laughs> Gonna lay down my sword and shield, boom, boom, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Revolution, I'll take up singing. Oh, God, look at those war plans. People live here? Home to the best. Oh. You gonna tell about our kid? Sure. But not right away. They're gonna have enough problems just getting used to you, Tut. Yeah. And don't you tell them either. Me? You. Yeah. Ready? Bring on the lion. Miss Catherine? Hi. Hello, everybody! Oh, it's me! Me! What a surprise! What a oh, wonderful Catherine. surprise! Why didn't you let us know you were coming? Why did you stub your head? Well, you look so thin. Are you dieting? No, I always look like this. Oh. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, this is Bob. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, part of our man is Bob. We've just had no idea where Katie's been. It's so good to see her. Morning. <laughs> Catherine, why Thanks didn't you phone it? Oh, why didn't you write? It's been so long. Listen, Liz is engaged. Can you believe it? Engaged to whom? Well, uh, well, you remember that boy she used to go out with, Len Coulter? Well, it's Len's cousin, Alan, from Stanford. Good old Liz. Where is she? She's at Alan's parents for the weekend. Oh, they're together constantly. He's such a nice boy. You know, we're really very delighted. Bob, uh, can I get you something? Drink or something? How about a martini? Martini? Who says the generations has nothing in common? Mr. Allman, this is quite a table you got here. Play? Mm. Play again later. First the drinks. Okay. How long are you going to stay? Oh, I don't know yet. We have to be in New York for a meeting. Well, we're having a little party for Liz and Alan next week. Now, you will stay for that. I don't think so. She's here now. That's what really counts. Yeah? Oh, thanks, Hugh. Get it? Is, uh, Bob your, um... Yes, Mom, he is. Uh... Hey, Bob. 
If you burned your draft card, what'll happen to you? Sooner or later, they're gonna try to butt me. And send you to jail? No, I'm not gonna waste any time in jail. If they come after me, I'll either go underground or split the country. Do you think you ever settle down and lead a normal life? What's a normal life? Now, you know very well what I mean. And don't get angry. Never. No, what's a normal life? Pretending there's nothing wrong? Oh, I'm not going to get into one of those kinds of discussions. Come on, help me. Mother, this country's changing. You wouldn't believe how much it's changing. Father, I've traveled all over and seen it. We're in a revolution, whether you know it or not. Well, I don't know anything about politics, and I don't care about them. <laughs> I guess I'm just too ignorant to understand. You don't feel any sense of duty to serve your country? Sure I do. That's why I'm not going to Vietnam. Yeah, but we're fighting there to protect the peoples of South Vietnam from invasion. You're wrong. We are the invaders there. And if you think we can win by supporting a corrupt government, you have to think again. Excuse me. Mother, you play at being ignorant. Just poor, dumb female. Whatever Daddy says, that's what you believe. That is absolutely not true. It is true. It is not. It is. It's not just you. It's, it's practically all women. You hide behind that femininity, gentility. You let yourself be treated like idiot children. Mommy. Sandwiches, everybody. Come and get it. Mommy, listen to I me. told you I don't want to get into this kind of discussion. You mean you don't want to discuss anything that might disturb your little dream world? Now, if you mean by that that I'm very, very content with my life, you're right. Isn't that what life is all about? To be happy? No. Not if your happiness depends on the oppression of others. Not if you buy your contentment with their suffering. No, it doesn't. Katie! Uh, it's your shot, Mr. Roman. Well, I... All right. I have a very shrewd fellow here, Kitty. Bob and I have been having a very interesting discussion. We haven't agreed on a single thing, but it has been interesting. Well, I've had enough of politics for one night. I'm going to bed. Bowman, will you show Bob his room? Bob's sleeping in my room. He certainly is not. This is our house. He is not sleeping in your room. Mother, Bob and I have been sleeping together for nearly two years. And there's something else I want to tell you. Mrs. Allman. Anywhere is fine with me. Thank you, Bob. Good night. We shouldn't have come here. It was bound to be this way. Katie, just be tolerant of this, won't you? That's part of what you're fighting for, isn't it? Tolerance. Don't you have any to spare for your parents? I'm sorry, Daddy. You know something, Katie? This friend of yours turned my own strategy around on me. Got me drunk, beat me. Let's go to bed. Baby. What you want? Someday, son, this is going to be all yours. Katie, your great grandfather was a rebel in his own way. Ran away from Ireland when he was 15. Bought at the Paris Commune. Came over here with hardly a penny and turned it into a fortune. Communist turned capitalist. Sorry, I never met him. Katie, what do you really want to do? I want to work to change our political system. And do what? Well, if racism at home and imperialism abroad, anything would be an improvement. I think it was Churchill who once said, the democratic form of government is a totally inadequate system, but it's the best system we have. Those weren't exactly his words, but it was something like that. American democracy doesn't exist, Daddy. It's a myth. When's the last time the majority of citizens even voted? And when they do, they're so misinformed, 
How could they even vote right? Katie, what would you rather have? The dictatorship and repression behind the Iron Curtain? Oh, Daddy, don't start that. Got an answer? Good morning. Morning, Bob. Been talking about me? Egotist. No, as a matter of fact, we've been talking about Katie's great-grandfather. He was a rebel, too. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. What do you think your uh, grandson will be? Don't you think it's a little premature to talk about that? Well, I'm just using my imagination. I'm, I can ask, can I? You ready? Yeah. Well, let's go. parents are good people. At least they're people who think they're good. But they're just as responsible for the system's injustice as anyone. Probably more responsible. Their wealth comes from others' poverty, their position from exploitation. I just wanted them to understand this. To see the contradiction in their goodness. But more important, I wanted them to accept me as I am, not the way they wanted me to be. that she was combing the country, preaching peace, and working odd jobs. There was even a rumor that she was a real revolutionary and had been to North Vietnam. This was definitely not the Catherine that I knew at college. I, my sympathies were with the anti-war movement, but I couldn't get much involved, seeing as how my second baby was due, and I was approximately the size of a large tank. I just I had a second, so I thought I'd drop by. Uh, where's Mom? Oh, Catherine, successful lawyers are not home during the day. Oh. I, I want to introduce you to the real power in the family. Come here. Right over here. Yeah. This is Abe. Abe? Yeah, Abe. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hello, Abe. You think he looks like me? No. We'll fix it. <laughs> okay. All right, enough with Abe. Abe can take care of himself. <laughs> hey, listen, you want some tea or coffee or something? No. Huh? Well, then, uh, want to sit down? Yeah. We'll sit over here. <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <sighs> oh, the convention, huh? Well, what candidate are you supporting? <laughs> None of them. You gotta change the system, not the personalities. Well, that's a little extremist, isn't it? Repressive societies need radical changes. You sound like a textbook. I'm serious. I just hope you know where to draw the line. 
Meaning? Some revolutionaries end up shedding blood, don't they? Only when no one will listen to the truth. Anyway, hey, it's going to be a peaceful demonstration. It'll be fun. Why don't you come? You might enjoy it. Oh, no. It's not for me. Why? Because you're a woman? Because you're only supposed to make the coffee and clean the house and do the laundry and uh, raise a family? Well, I'd say that I was doing a little bit better than that. Yeah, you are. Looks pretty prosperous around here. Oh, well, look who's talking about wealthy. My father's wealthy. I'm not. I'm sorry, Kathy. It's okay. How's it feel? Oh, it's great. Except for the throwing up at the beginning. I know, I hate that part, too. Kathy, you're pregnant? Yeah. Oh, when'd you get married? I didn't. Do you have to have a baby? No, no, you don't have to. Are you sure are changing? For the better. Yeah. Look, uh, I gotta go. Uh, will I see you again? Sure. I'll stop by before I leave. <laughs> I really missed you. Me too. Bye, Marbelle. Bye, kiddo. We, the representatives of America, are going to the I'm seeing on television. Daddy, Bob has been arrested. You got to send me money to post sale. All right, I'll take care of everything. I got to have it now. Oh, oh, please, I, I want to get him out of this, okay? All right, all right, uh, I'll send you anything you need. Katie, be careful. Katie? Katie?
going to be a lot of little punks fading after this. Now, we're better off without them. From now on, it's the toughest and the strongest. My neck, my neck, my neck. Free at last. <laughs> America, America, God shed his grace on me. I take it it wasn't so bad, is it? Kate, I had the best experience of my life, except for the fact that I'm so hungry I can't stand it. Do you know those pigs did us a favor putting us all together in that room? I have never felt so much strength in my life. I mean, you could literally feel it. Well, I didn't like it. Did they give you a hard time in there? No. But I decided I'm going all the way. Oh, yeah? Where? I'm gonna have an abortion. You wanna talk about this for a minute? There's nothing to talk about. No, no, slow down, Cisco. Let's talk about this for a minute. I just can't have a baby now, Bob. And I am no part of this decision? It's my body, it's my life. There's a little bit of me in there, too, you know. I have a baby now, huh? Face it. It's gonna get tougher and bloodier. Don't you understand? It's selfish to have a baby now. All right, all right, just don't cry. All right, just... I mean, we don't have to decide it right now, do we? But I'd like to talk about it, okay? It'll be okay, right? Oh, God. Do you love me? Oh, I love you. I love you. That convention was a turning point for all of us. The rally had turned into a war. The revolution was no longer imaginary. It was real now. And it was clear that the police state wasn't going to give up without a battle. I mean, there was blood in the streets. I won't forget those images. They burned into my head forever. They changed my life. If we were going to win, it would take all our strength. Revolution is a full-time thing. You see, it, uh, it takes complete dedication. I couldn't worry about a baby. There were more important things to do. I, Anyway, I didn't want to bring a child into this world anymore. First, you make the world a better place for children, and then you have the children. Abortion is a simple thing. It doesn't leave any marks, except in your head. Anyway, there wasn't any time to brood about it. We hadn't been prepared for a fight, but now that we knew we would have to, we began to train ourselves for battle. <laughs> Revolutionaries. Most of them were wanted by the pigs. We weren't wanted, but since our friends were, it amounted to the same thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a good point. It's a good point, but we're talking about violence here. I'm talking about the Cambodian bombings. I'm talking about the Milan massacres. I'm talking about the killing of blacks. It is about time that we meet some of this violence with violence of our own. That kind of talk is totally counterproductive. It shows that you don't want to do the hard job of 
of changing people's minds. Totally the opposite. Now, look, a revolution has got to start with education. Once you teach the people what's really going down, what's really happened, then they'll join you. Oh, caca. We have been wimpy about an armed struggle a bit too long already. I mean, we have to teach ourselves that we can only take it, or we can dish it out. And I'll tell you something else. I know that public opinion will be on our side. Wrong. That's not wrong. If you're not willing to fight, you don't belong here. If you're not with us, you're our enemy. Neither you either fight or you split. Right. We have to fight. Split or fight? That's right. <laughs> has been our belief in our weakness. Now we have to clearly show our strength. People know what's wrong. They want to know what to do about it. We've got to stand up in the face of the enemy and risk our own lives. We will show them what to do if you fight back. We support all those who take up the gun against imperialism. We too must take up the gun. You don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows because it's clearly in the air. Now, we will forecast the end of the system in blood. We are the weathermen. Seize the day. Seize the day. Come on. Seize the day. 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 Are you my Prince Charming? Uh-uh. Then who are you and what are you doing in my bed? I'm your heating man. Well, heating man, go do your stuff. It's freezing in here. It's supposed to. Don't you know that every revolution begins with the tenants freezing their butts off? Get up and go turn the heat up. No, I think I'll stay here and you go. No, you go. You. You. Oh, a contest to see who goes. Knives. Uh, swords. Tanks. Howitzers. Submarines. Thumbs. 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 Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Would you look at this? This doesn't work. We ought to move. Yeah, we don't have any money. How about if you ask your father to give us some more money? I don't think he's interested in financing the revolution. Yeah? But do you think that he's interested in heating up his daughter? But you were the heating man. Come on, Kate. He's given us enough already, Bob. Yeah, I think that uh, he can afford a little bit more. I mean, what is this? Is he so sacred? Huh? I mean, he's got it. We don't. All we're doing is asking him to share the wealth. I don't want to ask him. What's the matter with you? No, what's the matter with you? Your father's just another capitalist, that's all. It, it costs money to make a revolution, Kate. You gotta take it from where you can get it, and he's got it. Leave him alone! Well, what the hell for? And since when did family become so important to you? Ah, uh, don't mind me. What's up? It's all set for tonight. Are you smoking? Yeah. Don't you know that stuff's counter-revolutionary? It takes your mind off the work. That's a song. Good. Uh -huh. Thanks. Got the bread? Terrific. Come on. Oh. 
you get the money, man? Come on. Now the skinny one's got it. Let's see the stuff first, huh? Okay, give me the bread. I said give me the money. Okay, it's yours. Oh, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. I'm going to put it to good use, I promise. Hey, you want to know the truth? No. I hope you all blow your stupid heads off. Except we dig the bread. You stupid pig. Forget it. Let's go. Don't you know we're doing it for you? Or maybe you want to get your head blown off in Vietnam. Who cares where he gets wasted, Kate? Let's go. We got an invitation to my sister's wedding. Monogamy is a bourgeois trait. Mm-hmm. Marriage forces dependency, lies. We've got to bust away from it. Okay, we'll bust away from it. I mean it, Kate. What are you so upset about? We're not married. Yeah, but we live like we are. What's the matter? Our relationship. It's too possessive, it's too confining, it's too bourgeois. Is this a speech? Do you want me to stop eating? I'm serious, Kate. Sounds like you're using theory to justify your own side. Well, maybe I am. But let's face the fact. We've become too dependent on one another. And if we're going to survive, we have to be as self-reliant as possible. True? If you want to go with Jessica to Washington, go. Only don't try to make it sound like some kind of revolutionary action. I can do more work there. I'll be alone without you. The group is forming a collective. I think you should join. The group's politics and mine might be the same, but I'm not sure about our feelings. It'll help you learn to grow and live with them as a group. It'll be good for you, Kate. It'll be good for you. It'll be good for us. Look, I don't mind becoming self-reliant. Maybe I need to. And I don't mind working my problems out with a collective. And I don't want to cling to you. And I don't want to be a problem. Just have felt safe with you when I was you. You'll be with me. No, oh, I won't. So I'll miss you. That was the last time I saw Bob. The FBI was closing in on us after that gun incident and especially on him for draft evasion. So he decided to split for Canada, and I decided to stay in the States and go officially underground. Being underground is a totally different lifestyle. You have to practically become another person, because anyone you ever knew, family, friends, becomes a threat to your survival. The past is your biggest problem. as if she was an outlaw. And then she stopped talking altogether. She cut herself off from her family, her friends, me. I hired a detective. He traced her to Southern California. I couldn't find her. 
wanted to help her, but I just didn't know how. I felt impotent. I just didn't see what I could do to, to keep her. Militant strength, we will execute violent confrontations against the pig state and its corrupt institutions. These actions will be conducted in various cities on the same day. All the people, young and old, will see our power and join us. This day of rage will be the spark for the beginning of a national mass uprising. No, we're not. Let's go! Knock it off, huh? Come on again. Just a little ride. 
for two weeks from today, you are ordered not to leave this city or this state. about the Chinese. I am. You don't understand. I'm worried about you. I can see that, Mommy. And I love you for it. But it can't be helped. I'm doing what must be done. Well, I, I give up. I made you talk to her. You're the only other sane one around here. Stay with us for a while? No, I'm supposed to appear in court next week. For what? Breaking an in-ring, assault and battery, creating a nuisance, and uh, being a revolutionary. Are you going to tell Pop? No, I'm not going to tell him. <laughs> Why not? Because I'm not going to appear in court. What? I'm not going to give him a chance to put me in prison. Well, now, what makes you think you'd go to prison? Because I did everything they said I did. And they uh, put revolutionaries in jail. It's policy, you know. <gasps> oh, come on. Daddy never let you go to jail. Daddy doesn't run my life now, Liz. What will you do? Go back underground. How will we know where you are? You won't. But I'll be thinking of you. I love you, you know. Okay, I've waited long enough. No, wait. No, no, this is my van.
shouldn't even be writing you, but I feel I have to. I'm about to do things that you probably will never be able to approve of, but these are things that I believe in, and they must be done. generation have already sold themselves to the false dreams of status, material wealth, and hypocrisy. But I refuse to follow that path. I know I have, I haven't ever fully expressed my fondness for you. And I've often been too rigid in my actions. I know you have not always understood me. But I hope my family will never be ashamed of me, for what I'm doing is right, and I'm proud of it. I've loved you all very much, and always will, even though I can never be the daughter you once had. With these words, I give you all an embrace from your obstinate, prodigal Catherine. She just wasn't the same, you know? And she was not self-destructive. She was sabotaged by counter-agents. I know that for a fact. But the way she changed, I, I couldn't reach her. The best thing that could happen is someone to take her place because Catherine was right. That's it. When they said they could identify her by a filling in a tooth, I mean, a filling. It almost seemed as if if it weren't Catherine who died. I know her actions were wrong, but her intentions were good. I just wish she could have found some other way. I mean, it's so tragic. I had a daughter. Now she's gone. Your children well, their father's health will slowly go by and feed them on your dreams. The one they fix, the one you know by. Don't you ever ask them why, if they told you you would cry. To just look at them and stop.